you know when you took over Wexford um, for a couple of seasons, what was it like to go back and take over your home county? I'd seen them lose in 06 and I said, look, that I'd, I'd, I'd go down and I'd help out. But, uh, you know, I went down in 07 and, and 08 and um, it was hard to take Kilkenny at the time, Shane. Mm. Uh, that, that was the problem. And, uh, they were at their best. Uh, they were at their best then. And I, and I, 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 I remember distinctly coming back one night saying to the lads here at home, we played them in the Wilds Cup final in late January, early February, in 07, or Owen Larkin was playing. Jesus, you were nearly all playing in, in February. And, and, and I just come in and I said, this is colossal, these guys. You know what I mean? I know Michael, Michael Finley was here in uh, the Cork Institute of Technology with me, and Michael was, was midfield at the time. And like, these were colossal men. But they were brilliant hurlers as well, and, and you know, it just went into Wexford at the wrong time in a way to, to be hit by a juggernaut, and you know they, they beat us on average in six games by about fifteen points. Like, and, no, we were competing with everybody else with Tipperary, Cork, Waterford at the time. It wasn't a problem, you know what I mean? Um, we beat Tip in the quarter final by a couple of points in 07. We beat or Waterford beat us by a point in quarter final in 08. So we were there. We could never compete, but nobody was competing with Kilkenny at the stage. And, you know, I mean, I suppose I was being judged then against Kilkenny, which was tough, which was hard. But that's that's reality. That's life. But um, we move on. Would that win over Tipperary, the the late Damien Fitzhenry twenty one to the net against Tipperary, would that have been the highlight as manager of Wexford? I looked at they were all highlights. Of the, um, you know. I, w- I wouldn't say a highlight, but but you know whoever the tip corner back was, I'm grateful to him for moving the ball from the corner flag into the middle of the the goal. You know what I mean? He was no, and then Jesus Fitzhenry clung it like in fairness to him. You know what I mean? Uh, but that you know it was a highlight, Shane. But you know to to to, to, to get hockey by Kilkenny and and then to take stick over that then because you were losing to Kilkenny but the greatest hurling team of all time there's nobody can ever dispute that or argue that um, was it and t- then playing Waterford then in 08 in the quarter final in Perlis, like, and we had a 21 yard free and Fitzy, Fitzhenry took it and it just went over the bar by an inch and it had to be under it was in and we'd have won that game and, but they're like look they're all small little things and, and, um, and that's really it you know Could you compare or contrast the scrutiny of managing your home county Wexford you know where all your people are from versus your adopted county Cork which probably at the time relatively speaking is more high profile the, the expectation levels are different that's the first thing um, you know you, you go back to Wexford and they think you know some people would say oh what's this Cork fella coming back trying to tell us what to do and all that you, you have a little a lot of talking around corners as well whereas down here in Cork you're expected to win the All-Ireland it doesn't really matter you must win um, and that's it and um, you live by the sword you die by the sword and, and that's really it in a nutshell we had that opportunity Shane two years ago against Limerick uh, you know six points up eight minutes to go and we didn't take it and you look back on those incidents you look back on those times and you say what could I have done better but I think Limerick just had something in 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 um, 2018, they had something. They were lucky, I think. They they, they, they got that score against Kilkenny and Turles when, when they were two points down, then yet they still won by two. So they were sticking in there. And, uh, you know, um, mm. but does that, there's, there's more scrutiny on Cork here. There's, there's more, uh, there's more PR, there's more exposure, all of that. But, you know, as I said the other day on, on the Sunday game, like that, there's nine counties now can win the All Ireland and it's wide open, it's level, it's a level playing field, you know. Um, t- before I come back to Cork, I might just quickly ask you about your, your couple of years with Carlo. Did you enjoy that? I did. I did. And, and again, I went to Carlo and, and um, at some great players like Marty Cavan and the Cody's and that. But Jesus, when I went there, you know, my first year, we were close to beating Wexford in Wexford Park in the championship. Uh, but you know what I mean? That James Doyle hit the post. It was on one side of the post. We were up four or five points. And then David Redmond and Owen Quigley got down the field and get a goal at the other end. So, you know what I mean? Oh, Jesus, they're all margins. Like, but 
again, I, I suppose like Carlo were very successful at, at that stage with Mount Leinster Rangers getting to an All Ireland club final. And, you know, we had lost, the, in my second year there, we'd lost the services really of the Mount Leinster players because they were all playing the Cody's and that. Like Eddie Cody and Richard Paul, Paul they were brilliant players and, 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 and Mark McCall. But The problem, Shane, that a lot of GA people really, really don't understand is the problem in Carlo and Kerry is that you have four, five, six, seven clubs. That's what you have. And you probably have those players probably for two or three years every decade. And that's really what you get. And if you can get it out of those players in that period, then you've been successful. That kind of nurtures. But if you lose two or three players, you don't then have the backup, which the likes of Kilkenny, Cork and Tipperary have the numbers to back up. And, that, and that's a huge issue. And, you know, that... You know the the, the the Carlo matches against Leash and Westmead. It's 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 up. Those matches are up and down. Kerry is the same with Carlo West Antrim. So you have five counties that they're successful for two or three years in each decade, but they don't have enough numbers then to back up that success. Like so, when you take the likes of Leash with Eddie uh, last year, Eddie needs you now three or four five new players to come in to freshen it up to blood it up and Kerry need that Antrim need that and um, when you only have um, like the eight senior hurling clubs in Kerry well, there's four or five in Carlo I think now you, you, you just don't and if you lose then if some fella goes to America if some fella goes here if some fella goes there it's a massive loss like, and you, you can absorb that in Cork Kilkenny and Tipperary but you can't absorb it in 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 you know the, the 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 likes of Kerry, Carlo, Westmead, Leash, and Andrew. So you had a, you have a very long and storied career with Cork. You know, even if you jump back to being a player, but you were part of Bertie Oak Murphy's uh, team in two thousand and was it just two thousand and two only? Two thousand and two, and then we got the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like I was thinking, because you're part, of, like you would know Gerald McCarthy well from the bars, and you obviously saw what happened to him and the strikes and Sean Ogo, Halpin even spoke about on the Sunday game as well. Like you've seen some kind of rough, kind of, the rough end of that strike action, um, very close to home over the years in Cork. Yes. Like, how destructive was that? How tough was that on individuals? It's 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 extremely tough. It's extremely hard. Um, I was a selector in two thousand and two, uh, and ah oh Jesus, there was rumblings, there was discontent going on way back in the National Hurling League. I can't remember the exact times and dates or anything like that, but there was rumblings going on. Then we got to the league final against Kilkenny, and there was, you know, and Turles and and there was the socks, and there wasn't the socks, and you know fellas were going around the parade with their socks down and um, I think I don't know there was a meeting or something in Port Leash in the GPA on the Saturday whether fellas had put socks up or down whatever. but I'm not that type of person Shane I, I come out straight if, if, if you have a problem then you air your grievances you air your problems and it wasn't handled really well mm. but on both sides I've no problem saying that um, and then Losing in two thousand and two the championship the way we did, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't great. So it kind of fell apart. And Bertie O resigned, and um, you know, I didn't want to go because I I had felt in two thousand and two what, what 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 had I done wrong? Um, I was there. I I will m meet you head on. I'll meet you face to face, and that and 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 you know that's the best way. And and then. You know, I had to go then in 2002. I didn't like it. Um, you know, and, and it still would it still would cause me uh, upset, cause me grievance and that, and, and um, certainly. Um, and then it went on then in later on, later years, in 08 or 09 and that. Did, did your relationship with the players from the 2001-2002 era, was that damaged irrepar irreparably after that or did you kind of make up it's damaged yeah. it's yeah. damaged yeah. yeah so like when the players then went on and, and had all Ireland success in 04 05 how did you view that were you able to oh, enjoy I, that I, 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 I thought that was brilliant hmm. I thought that was brilliant and I, I think the master stroke then Shane was putting Brady the master stroke really was putting Brady in charge in 2003 Brady 
again, you know, a school teacher, principal of the North Mon, really, really good guy. I played with him. Brady at best at times is a gruff kind of character. Uh, very straight, very, you know what I mean? Knew his hurling inside out. Very direct, knew what he wanted and was the right guy in the right place at the right time. And that, and that proved right. Um, and I was, you know what I mean? They, 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 they backed it up. They lost uh, oh, 03 and oh, uh, 06, I think, and, and they won four and five. So, so I, they backed it up and, and then that's it. But then, you know, to go and strike again in, in 08 then was, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Could you, could you believe like the fact that it was over picking selectors? I'm sure it felt unbelievably important to the players at the time. There was a couple of votes with club delegates didn't go their way and they still went on strike again. Did you feel that they were they were more or less giving two fingers to democracy in a way because the votes had been done? Yeah, but I, I would never go on strike, Shane. Mm. I've never gone on strike. I won't go on strike. Um, you know what I mean? I'll argue with you. Um, and then when Gerald was there, then Gerald had, Gerald had had won five all Ireland's across. Gerald captain Cork in 66. Gerald was a legend in, in terms of that. And that, that man, that man deserved respect. You know what I mean? So he had to be respected. He was a, an icon of Cork hurling. And he had to be, he should have been treated better than what he was. And do you think that like Cork lost out on, like I spoke with Tom Kenny, he was like, that maybe they missed out on at the very least getting the to massive, all Ireland finals? Massive then, massive then, Shane, because I went to Wexford in 07 and 08 and fucking juggernaut hit me. And you know what I mean? I, I said to you earlier that we had competed, Shane, with everybody back to Kenny. And suddenly you had a team capable. You know, that, that, that Cork had won, had been in four All Ireland finals, you know, winning all four and all five. And suddenly then, uh, Cody gets all these great players around him and, and they drove it on. And, and, and Tommy and JJ and those and, and, and Michael Fennelly Shefflin, you know, Eddie Brennan and that, they had their opportunity to stack up their All Ireland medals because one of the counties that could potentially have beaten them wasn't focused on on what it should be about mm. yeah absolutely. and ultimately at the end of the day you know what i mean that that that's um that allowed to kenny um you know that allowed to kenny to develop when if if, if cork had been strengthening which they should have been after row five or six really um cork would have won other than said i've i've no doubt about that Mm. You know when that, that famous video interview you did where you're you're getting very emotional after the under twenty ones victory oh, over Jesus Waterford? Yeah, go on. Like how long did it take to develop that sort of bond with a county? Because you know, you are not gonna get that emotional unless you're you're truly kind of part of it. I came here in seventy four, Shane. Um I came here, I went to UCC in seventy four. Um I've loved every Every day, every hour, every minute I've been here, I've loved Cork. Cork, Shane, is a is a sporting mad county. They love their hurling. They love their football. They love their soccer. They love their rugby. They love everything about sport. And if you're successful at sport, they will support you. I've been in Turner's Cross. I've been in... You know, Flower Lodge. I've I, I've been in Parky Keep. I've been at Musgrave Park. I've been at Rugby. This is a an unbelievable county uh, for 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 sport, mm. and they support you. And and that's what I've fallen in love with in that, that that sporting culture. And they love their. And you can see their, you know, the the the, the color. Jesus, Shane, we be clear there in eighteen in the Munster final, and you know. In Turles, there was a sea of red. I call it a sea of red. The whole of Cork was there, and it's an incredible experience. It's an incredible thing, and I've lived that, and I've loved it here. And you know, I love going home now because my t- my daughter moved out of Cork and moved, <laughs> moved back to Wexford. <laughs> so Sarah is after building a house down in in Wexford, and um, they're living down there, and. You know what I mean? That's why I've gone down to the Martins as well. So somehow I have to go and visit my daughter. But um, look, this is an incredible country. You know what I mean? Uh, they always say this is the only republic in Ireland down here. And 
you know what I mean? Great, great characters. Jack Lynch, Christy Ring, Jimmy Barry, all of those. And you had great soccer players as well. And, and you know what I mean? Flower Lodge and, and, and Turner's husband was 30,000 people in Flower Lodge and all that. Like, you know, I've loved it. I, I, I love it down here. Being part of Kieran Kingston's um, his management team the first time, you know, obviously before you took over as manager, did you did you enjoy that role? And like, obviously he decided himself to to leave the job because of work commitments and what have you. But did you kind of see yourself? Well, maybe I might take over this job again. No, no, absolutely not. No, um, and and what happened was that I got a call from the county board and and they said they wanted to talk to me about because I was managing the under-21 team in 17 at the time. Um, we want you to, to go in with the senior team. We would like you to go in with the senior team to, you know, to bring bring on the under-21 side of the house, if you know what I mean. And there were great so players thinking, coming through. Hmm? And there were really good players coming through, you know, oh, yeah, Coleman, yeah, Fitzgibbon, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I met Kingston then and, and you know, Kingston said that, like he wanted a voice there, we say from the under twenty one side of the thing. But then I came in on that there, and uh, you know that I suppose like it, it was difficult because I was late coming in. But then you know when I got in, then working with uh, with Kingston, with Pat Ryan, with Sully, Pat Hart, and I played against Hartman, so I kind of knew what was coming from him. Like you know what I mean? But look, it it they had. They had been beaten by Wexford in 16, so they, 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 there was a loss of confidence there. If you go back, Wexford had beaten them in Turles, first time in 50 years, I think. So there was a loss of confidence coming into 17. Um, and then Kingston had got Gary Keegan on board to, to work in terms of psychology performance and all of that. So, you know I mean? That, that's... That, that appointment was good at the time uh, and he picked them up then really um, you know yeah absolutely so when like you were there for that Waterford game in 2017 the All-Ireland semi-final and uh-huh. Red, Red, yeah. obviously the things changed massively with Damien Cahillan's red card and obviously yeah. that's, that's not singling yeah. them out but the game just completely you no we were up we were up two mm. points at the time and then uh, you know Damien was on a yellow and, and he was out around the 65 midfield and while swing across and sure like the ref had no option but to send him off then and, you know what I mean that turned the whole tide and you know what I mean and that turned the whole tide in favour of Waterford then and you know what I mean the Gleeson ran up the field and all of that so you look know, Jesus, you're going to bring up these things on me and the uh, Watford one and the Limerick one. Get yeah, one. Yeah, but it's not to sort the boot in, but it's it's more to say that the team is, has been unbelievably close and it has just been, I don't know, the the roll of a ball, you know, the the bounce of a ball between that team winning would all. You Ireland go and back, but you go back in the old days. You go back and you you go back to the sixties, seventies, and eighties, and don't give out to me for saying go back to the old days but Cork would have shut that game or Cork would have won that game and it's that resilience and, and that that resilience and that perspective Shane of, of winning tight games when it really really matters I, could, I said to you previously about you know in the old days with the bars like you, you, you'd win those matches mm. it, was, it, it was in the back of like remember when they used to say about Liverpool in the old days like, they still win the match no matter what if they were 2-0 down 30 seconds ago they still win it and, and and it's that you know we've lost matches over the last few years we've lost the 221s to tip we've we've lost the water we've lost the limerick and um, we lost under 21 final to limerick up in limerick in 17. so tight games which cork haven't won and and that's a critical issue but but that comes i think from uh if you are winning the colleges if you're winning the club uh, all Ireland. These are mindsets that 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 are stepping stones to winning senior. Mm. They're all little. They're all rolls of the dice, or you know. Is, is it? Could you possibly link it all back to the strikes and the fallouts and the few years of not winning because of what happened there, and now it's actually extended to fifteen years of not winning in All Ireland. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's I put it in there. Uh, the strike certainly didn't help. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and. Uh, the strike certainly didn't help and and um you know i mean it could have been more positive then and and uh, and still 
you know what I mean? But if you're winning the colleges, if you're winning club, Cork club hurling is not strong enough, Shane, to, 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 you know, that we haven't won the Ireland club title for years. And, and you know what I mean? That, that, that says that your club strength competitions are not strong enough. Mm. That, that, you know what I mean? We should be competing at club level. You know, when, we're starting to compete at colleges level now with, with, with Middleton CBS and with Christians College. We're starting to compete for the for the Harky Cup thing. You know, like I was involved with the 15s, 16s, the under 17s won the All Ireland under 17 in 2017. Um, you know, so the, the, the underage is, is, is coming on, but you now need to go the next hurdle, which is about winning. Mm. And, and why do you think? What happened last year, do you think? Because at times, again, you beat Limerick, the reigning All-Ireland champions. You looked brilliant at times. Obviously, you turned around the following week against right. Tipperary. Didn't happen. You know, because the talent is clearly there. Is it tough to settle on a team? What is it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough to settle on the team. But, but like, in 2018, we were that, you know, six points up with eight minutes to go. And that, in, you know, that finished closing out the game. 2019 then was inconsistency. We weren't consistent enough. And, you know, you must be consistent. You must play at a seven all the time, but you never drop below a seven. No matter how bad you are, you're still playing um, at a seven. And then when you play well, you're up to an eight and a nine. And last year, you know, that, that you know, in the championship, we played tip here in the park and, and um, they just you know, got the better of us. And then when we go to Limerick, an incredible performance against Limerick up in Limerick. And, you know what I mean, playing water then here we won. And then going up to Clare on the day of all the rain and, you know, you know, playing Kilkenny then, you know, we should have had Kilkenny gone after 10, 15 minutes last year in the, in the, in the quarter final and we, we didn't stick the boot in. And, and um, it's that, it's that inconsistency is the key and also and, and I won't use this as an excuse and, and don't tie me to it but we've lost a few players here Alan Cadigan was a massive loss uh, in 80 uh, Colm Spillane was a massive loss last year and you know, you know Cork should be able to replace these players 100% mm. but you know what I mean? Cadigan was a massive loss in, in 18, and, and if we'd have had him against Limerick, but look, that's everybody's missing players, you know. Do you, do, you can, do you ever get concerned about some of the players that are now 30, 31, 32 even, I think, Patrick Horgan, the possibility of missing out on the season with, with COVID-19, that this guy who's currently in the prime of his life, arguably the best hurler yeah. in the country, that they might miss out on an All-Ireland or a chance yeah. to play their best? Yeah, but- but you know, Shane, you, you, you know, Shane, you must take the opportunity when they arise. And that, that is, that, 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 you must focus. You don't have, and I often said to the young fellas when, when I was with the 21s, you don't have time. You need to win it when you can win it. Because you don't, you know, next year may never come. And you may not get that opportunity. So different things happen at different times. And you must take the opportunity when it arises. We had the opportunity in 18, we didn't take it. We had the opportunity in 17 against Waterford and we didn't take it. And it's 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 that that drives me bonkers. You know what I mean? That 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 uh, you must take the opportunity when it arises because next year doesn't come. Mm. And you can only focus on the present. That's all you can focus on. And you know what I mean? The, 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 everybody is going to be a year older this year, but the Ireland will run Shane in October this year. So, you know what I mean? But the, 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 the issue these days is that there are nine counties that can win the Ireland. The five teams in Munster, Galway, and Len- Leinster with Kilkenny, Dublin, and Wexford. Every county, every manager thinks they can win. Go back a few years, Shane, it was Tipperary, Kilkenny, and Cork. Mm. And, that, and that really was it in a nutshell. And if you look over, you look over the last three years. Tipperary, Limerick, Galway, Clare have won, uh, and Kilkenny. So you have five counties in the last seven years have won the other. I, I I don't know is that in the record books going back. It, it, it definitely isn't. So, you know. Yeah. How how difficult is it on the sideline to change things? You know. You know the way like the second half against Kilkenny, you were in a great position. And then things go against you. I don't know, maybe Kilkenny made some changes. But, you know, I'm looking down as 
someone who's not in the thick of it, who's not under pressure, who's not trying to turn the game, and I'm maybe identifying things that I might see myself, but you on yeah. the sideline, pressure on you, massive crowd around you, trying to even communicate with the players. How tough is it to change a game mid-flow? It's, it's, it's basically impossible. But what you're relying on then, what you're relying on then is, is the trust of your management team. You're relying on the trust of the guys up in the stand, the stats guys. You're relying on the selectors on the sideline. You're, you're relying on an awful lot of things. You're relying on hunches then that go right or go wrong. Um, and it's your it's your management team come in then, Shane. Um, the guys with the stats, the guys and watching the videos, whatever. And they're the guys that give you the critical information that whether, you know, and, and then you make choices then and whether they work or whether they don't work. Everyone sees that it's, it's, it's obvious. It's obvious when the game is over after, you know, an 18, bring on Connor Sull and put him in the sweeper and that, you know what I mean? But um, when, when it works, it's brilliant. And when it doesn't work, then you're fired. Mm. That's it. Can you see yourself getting back into management again? I know you're with St. Martins, but I mean at the county level. Oh, I'm still young. I'm, 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 um, I'm, I'm as young as I ever was, Shane. Um, and as young um, as you'll ever be. Oh, yeah, I know, <laughs> man. No, I, I, um, I never say never. Um, you know, but, but look, I've, I've, I've had a great career, uh, both as a player and a manager. I've enjoyed ninety uh, percent of it. Ten uh, percent of it, I've often driven home and. You'd be on your own in the car and, and I have two great children um, who help me uh, talk to me all the time and tell me what I'm doing right or doing wrong and um, but I keep going and um, I see you, you you never know Shane you never know what's going to happen and um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it in Wexford with the Martins and um, you know they're an incredible club and, and um, I'm you know, really excited about it, looking forward to it. Do you, do you ever have discussions with your son David about tactics that he t he can kind of explain from soccer that you could somehow apply to hurling? Every day. Yeah? Twelve How? years. He's twelve years in England, Jane. Yeah. Every day. Every day and he he lays into me and I you know what I mean, look my days of laying into him now are over because he's finished he's retired. Well, Christ, he, he 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 gives it to me hard. And I remember after the the the, the Limerick semi final in eighteen, he said, "Dad, uh, time to go. We're not going to win." Do you know what I mean? He 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 he'd give, he'd give it to me fairly hard. Now, what are you doing with A, B, and C? But look, I I you know I would have been given it. I would have. It's it's the way you get the message across. But I would have been giving it to him over the last few years. And um, you know what I mean about whatever and um FA Cup finals, league matches and all that and um but I talk to him every day, every day about tactics, about this, about that. Yeah, you know, genuine phone calls every day and you know what I mean? So would sometimes they're a small bit heated and that, you know. Would you ever puck ball with him? Um I haven't seen him for a while. Yeah, uh, of but but uh, I would when I'm over in Hull uh, mm. in the garden and uh, his young fellow was a year old, um, Brody, uh, there a month ago. So I sent him over from Brian Walsh in Wexford. I sent him over two hurleys and two slitters. And I think the young fellow is after clearing half a hole uh, with the <laughs> hurley in his hand going around breaking things. So we might have uh, an English player playing for Cork Sharks. <laughs> right. How's, um, how's life been for you since this COVID-19 started? Uh, but on, on, a, on a personal level, um, I work as a lecturer here in the Cork Institute of Technology and, and um, it's challenging on the students, um, you know, that we finish lectures in, in, um, in, in, in March and that, and it's extremely challenging. Um, I, I have MBA students, I have honours degree students, I have the honours degree in social care as well. So it's very difficult and uh, challenging on those. A lot of my students are, are nighttime people, so they're working. So you have the pressures of work, you have the pressures of home life, and then you have the pressures of assignments and that. And, you know, some of them are struggling and that's so all you're here to facilitate you, you help them. My social care uh, degree people, they're working in care settings. Uh, you know, I think they deserve great credit. They, des they deserve a mention that, you know what I mean? They really don't get that mention um, 
because they're not seen. Um, and we've, we've wonderful people in, in, in social care here that are helping people in care settings, they're helping people in care homes, and they're doing a marvelous job and, and don't get the credit they deserve. And then the MBA students are all middle management people. And, and again, they have pressures of, of, of work, of getting my assignments done and whatever. So, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's tough and challenging. Um, and on a personal level, you know what I mean? I've lost a stone and a half. Um, I'm on the bicycle, cycling every day. You know what I mean? Um, so keep going. I'm yeah. looking forward to get the hurling back, Shane. Would you want to see the GA looking to open up pitches, the government? Oh, yeah. To, open yeah. up, open up, open yeah. up, open up. Time to, I think people just need to have a bit of cop on. People need to have a bit of savvy and, you know what I mean, stay apart from each other, stay at home. But, you know what I mean, get out, get back to the hurling, you know what I mean, get it up and running and, and, and you know, mm. let's get the show on the road. And, and are you... In f- or for or against playing the, the championship behind closed doors, if it has to be. No, open it up. Open it up. I'm I'm all in favour of, you know what I mean, opening it up and open up GA pitches and, you know what I mean. I I think that uh, uh, we've great leadership from John Horn and the GA, and he's saying that we'll go later on the year after the 18th of July, and I think we play the club hurling first, and then we get the inter county hurling in in. September, October, and I think that's the way forward. Mm. So, so you think full crowds should go? Oh yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do you, so? Do you think yeah. the government is a bit slow about opening up society? No, but the, the, the government, the government has to be cautious, and the government is going to be led by science. It's not going to be led by 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 opinion uh, from guys like me or whatever. So they're going to be led by caution, by science. And but you know, Shane, and you've been around long enough that every physio, every doctor will say. When you go back, Shane, and, and the physio will say two or three weeks, and you want them back tomorrow, mm. and you know in your heart and soul that that you can play tomorrow, but the, the physio says no, two to four weeks more of recovery. And but physios and doctors are cautious, Shane, and 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 um, I think that the, the government will be cautious. So if it's a case that you could only play a championship behind closed door, and the option was to not play it, would you rather not play it? And played in front of no, players. no, play, 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 play the matches, play the matches, open the stadium. You know what I mean? I, I think the country needs a lift, Shane. The country, the country has come out of an economic recession in 08 or 09. Hmm. We now have another recession. We're going to have a massive economic uh, bill on our hands. So you know, who's going to pay? Who's, you know, what I mean, and and you know, we're going to have to put our hands in our pockets again after the. What we've done in 08 or 09, you know, and it's difficult. And and I really, really feel sorry for the older people, I should have said, the senior people in Ireland at the moment who were asked to cocoon, you know, who were asked to stay at home, who were asked to stay out of the way, who, you know, who have built this country, a lot of them have built this country, and now they're being asked to go again for more money. Jesus, you know, like, you know, stay at home, stay out of the way. Um, you know, give us another few bob to keep the country up and running again. Like, and these people, you know, in their twilight years, they deserve something more than that. They, 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 they deserve our respect. They deserve our credit. They are our thanks. And you know, I think we need to open up for the also shame for the for the for the mental. You know, I'm Jesus. I'm fine. I don't know how I'm keeping going. You know, and on cycling and gardening and things like that. Like, but you know, once or twice I kind of said, "Jesus, look, it's a lovely sunny evening, like yesterday evening." And I'm sitting at home out the back, and I said, "Why, why am I not down playing hurling?" You know, and, and I think for the for the good of the country, for the well being of the country, for the well being of the economy, let's open it up and everyone behave themselves. Everyone take care. Everyone take because by all means, mm. but let's open. GA pitches, let's open the churches, let's open business and, and let's get back to where we were. And then finally, uh, I noticed throughout the whole thing you're wearing uh, a New Zealand jersey and I sense that it's something to do with having Dougie Howlett as back, part of your backroom team in 2019. Yeah, I brought, I lost Gary Keegan. Keegan said he, he, he wanted to go and, and um, after the two years and uh, it's grand, grand and then 
I made contact with 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 Doug Howlett. And Doug was around here with, with 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 Munster, and he was working with Munster, and he said he'd love to come on board. So he was with us, and an incredible guy. I thought one of the most humble people that I've met, and I spoke to him a lot about the culture, the All Blacks culture, the Maori culture, the New Zealand culture, the New Zealand success of winning, and. The whole idea was to bring him in and look at that high performance um, aspect of, of 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 winning, of performing, and to bring that in from 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 the All Blacks. So he was he was a great influence. But he said to me during the summer, he said, "John, I'm going home." Uh, his parents were in New Zealand, and his wife's parents were in New Zealand, and they were, you know what I mean? They were getting older and. He had kids that were on the border of, of, of secondary school. So do I go now or do I wait five years? So he said, we're going out. So he, he rang me and he said, I need to meet you. And um, I said, yeah. And I knew by his voice that he was emotional. And, and so we met in the Rochester Park Hotel. He just have a cup of coffee. And uh, it, was, it was very little said in a way because it was kind of, Two of us are kind of emotional guys and um, just said to me, he said, I want to give you something. And I said, yeah. And he said, I have a jersey here for you. And on the, on the, on the crest of the jersey, on the, on the arm of the jersey, I don't know whether you can see it or not, that New Zealand versus Samoa on the 16th of June 01. And he pulls this jersey out of the, out of the bag and he gives it to me and... and um, I have a fascination with the All Blacks. I have a fascination with their culture and the Maori culture. I've been in New Zealand and I've absolutely loved it. So if I turn around, Shane, I don't know whether you're going to get this on camera or not, but I, I do my best. All right, you can tell me if I'm too high or too low. Yeah. You'll see. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Did you see it? Bend down a small bit, yeah. I can see the fourteen. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see Yeah. I, I can see the fourteen. Yeah. There. Yeah, so like he 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 gave me that, um, and I was an emotional wreck. Um, far far a legend to give me one of his jerseys. So I couldn't wait to get home. I said, Jesus, I'd have to Google. So I went googling, and there was Howlett was on the wing that day against Samoa on the sixteenth of June in all one, and I treasure this then. Um, and it's one of the things and in Cork there's always a great tradition also of, of the bishop um, the bishop comes to the Cork Hurling camp every year and gives his blessing and gives his few words and, and John Buckley was always very good to me uh, the bishop of Cork when I was involved with teams and at, at times after 18, 19, I was down. At times in 19, I was down last year. You know, you, you, you have your opportunity and it goes and, and, and it's gone. You don't you don't kind of get him back again. And, and um, But uh, he rang me anyway and he said, I want to meet you. And uh, I said, yeah. And uh, he said, there's something to give you. And he said, I was over in Rome. He said, and I got a rosary beads off the Pope. He said, and there you are. He said, thanks very much for what you've done for Cork Hurling over the last few years. So I've, I've two wonderful mementos, two wonderful gifts from, you know, people that I, I, I really like John Buckley and, and, you know, I have great respect for him. And, but I've tremendous admiration for how that um, I've, I've, I've something that's that's all I have seen from my two years. That's great mementos to have and no doubt great memories, too. Yeah, 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 and then that's that's all we have, Shane. That's all we have. That's all we end up with. The medals are only a reflection of winning matches, but you have memories and that. And uh, look, it's been good. Mm. You've been brilliant with your time, John. Really appreciate it.